Hey guys, Jared here, and today we're going to compare the Intel Skylake 6700HQ CPU against the newer KB Lake 7700HQ. We'll run some benchmarks to see how they perform, and discuss the differences between them to help you find out which you should get. First, let's note the similarities between these two chips. Both have four CPU cores with eight threads, are based on a 14 nanometer manufacturing process, and they also both have the same 45 watt TDP with six megabytes of cache available. Both CPUs support up to 64 gigabytes of RAM with two memory channels and provide 16 PCI Express lanes. That's where the majority of the important similarities end. So how do they differ? The main difference is that the older 6700HQ is clocked slightly lower at 2.6GHz and can turbo up to 3.5GHz, while the newer 7700HQ is clocked at 2.8GHz and can turbo up to 3.8GHz. How much of a performance difference does this make practically? To test this, we've run some CPU-specific benchmarks on two different laptops with these processors to find out. Both laptops are running Windows 10 with all available updates installed on an SSD and have 16GB of DDR4 RAM at 2400MHz. Apart from the differences in the graphics cards, the main difference is the CPUs, which is what we're testing, so the laptops are pretty similar otherwise. In Cinebench, the CPU score for the 6700HQ was 691, while the 7700HQ received 740, so only a small improvement, but an improvement nonetheless. In the Passmark CPU benchmark, the 6700HQ got a CPU score of 8973. Interestingly, the 7700HQ got a score of 8820, which is actually slightly lower. I ran this test multiple times with the same result Result. The newer CPU came behind the older CPU in terms of overall score on this test. Despite this, if we actually look at the numbers for each individual test, in almost all cases the 7700HQ comes out slightly in front, so it seems like the way this particular benchmark generates the final overall score is a bit strange. In Geekbench 4, the 6700HQ got 4334 for single core and 13066 for multi core. The 7700HQ got 4,402 for single core, and 12,293 for the multi-core score. This was another interesting test. Although the single core performance of the 7700HQ is a bit higher as expected, the multi-core performance was slightly behind in this specific test. Again, this might depend on what the test is actually doing behind the scenes. However, in this instance, the 7700HQ was slightly slower in the multi-core test, which I found to be interesting. The 7-zip benchmark was run for 10 passes with a dictionary size of 32 megabytes. The 6700HQ got a total rating of 19,121 MIPS, while the 7700HQ got a total rating of 19,602 MIPS. So the 7700HQ was slightly faster at compression tasks here, though barely. I then used Handbrake to encode a 500MB MP4 video file that I recorded from 1080p to 720p. The 6700HQ completed the job at an average speed of 35 frames per second while the 7700HQ completed encoding the same file at 37.9 frames per second, so the 7700HQ was only slightly faster in the encoding test. In most of the tests, the 7700HQ was ahead of the 6700HQ, however I still found these results quite interesting. These two CPUs also have inbuilt graphics, and while I don't expect anyone to buy these CPUs for their inbuilt graphics, it's probably worth comparing them to see the differences. I'm going to leave this for a future video though, as my results so far are actually showing that the older 530 graphics in the 6700HQ are outperforming the newest 630 graphics in the 7700HQ in every test that I throw at it, so I think some more investigation is required there first. Based on these tests, the 7700HQ appears to only be a very small incremental upgrade, which I figured would be the case after watching a bunch of 6700K and 7700K benchmark reviews. However, I wanted to test these two laptop chips as I didn't see anyone else doing it and I was curious to find out. It's a bit disappointing too, as the 6700HQ was released in Q3 of 2015, while the 7700HQ came out in Q1 of 2017. So despite being quite a lot newer, it's not that much better. I didn't notice any practical difference between using the two laptops with either of these CPUs. So if you're looking for a new laptop, the 6700HQ is definitely still fine, as the newer version only offers extremely small performance improvements, at least in the workloads that were tested here. By all means, if the new laptop that you're considering has a 7700HQ CPU, go for it. But if you're also looking at one that has a 6700HQ, then it's definitely still a good competitor, and might even be a bit cheaper now due to it being last-gen 
generation. If the prices are similar, then I'd suggest going for the newer 7700 HQ. Otherwise, you'll need to determine if the extra cost is worth it based on the small performance increase that we've measured in our tests here. If you're already running a 6700 HQ, there's basically no incentive to upgrade to the next generation, unless you need to buy a new laptop anyway for other reasons. Unless something drastically changes within the CPU area in the near future, you probably won't need to upgrade your laptop in terms of CPU power for quite some time. So what did you guys think about the performance differences between the 6700HQ and 7700HQ CPUs from Intel? Personally, I'd like to see something better from Intel next generation, but I'm not expecting much at the moment. Who knows, maybe AMD will finally shake up the scene with Ryzen. Be sure to let me know your thoughts down in the comments, and leave a like on the video if you found it useful. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for future tech videos like this one.